Uh, this press conference is called very early in um, what we have our two investigations. So we're probably not going to have the level of detail that you would desire, uh, mostly because we either don't know or we would be merely speculative with the information. But that being said, we wanted to get this information to you as, uh, as quickly um, as, we, as we could. The James and Police Department is investigating two significant but perhaps unrelated incidents that occurred in Janesville over the last two days. On Saturday morning, May 3rd, 2014, officers responded to a report of a missing person from 208 North Main Street. This missing person, Mary Coltard, age 75, was missing from her apartment. The investigation reveals that personal property of Ms. Coltard, a water bottle, was found on the Milwaukee Street Bridge. Other personal property was found south of the Milwaukee Street Bridge on land, but in the area of the Rock River. This evidence prompted a ground, water, and aerial search of the Rock River. The ground and water search was conducted in the Janesville area, while the aerial search included the Rock River south to the Illinois state line. On Sunday evening, May 4th, Shortly after 10 o'clock p.m., officers recall, were called to 1602 North Pontiac Drive regarding the report of a fight occurring in a residence. Upon arrival, the officers of the officers, two male residents of the address were found to have been involved in the altercation, during which a male victim, age 28, was stabbed several times. The victim was transported to Mercy Hospital in Janesville for treatment of the stab wounds one of which was described by doctors as near fatal. A female resident, age 32, was uninjured during the incident, as were two small children that were sleeping during the incident. The other male resident, Clayton J. Courtney, male, age 28, attempted to flee on foot upon the arrival of police. Mr. Courtney was caught after a brief foot pursuit he was transported to Mercy Hospital for an ankle injury reported by Mr. Courtney. The subsequent investigation revealed that prior to the fight, Mr. Courtney attempted to set a vehicle on fire that was in a parked or was parked in an attached garage. He also damaged cabinets in the kitchen. During this rage, Mr. Courtney stated, I've already killed three people tonight. We are all going to die. He also made threats to harm the onboard child of a female co-tenant. Officers found Mr. Courtney covered in mud and blood. The blood on Mr. Courtney was not consistent with the crime scene on North Pontiac Drive. The investigation revealed that earlier in the evening, Mr. Courtney was believed to have been in the area of the Memorial Street Bridge, as he had told others he was going to drink and do drugs with a female under the bridge. Accordingly, early this morning, officers searched the area of the Rock River by the Memorial Street Bridge. Officer locate, officers located the body of a deceased female to the rear of 533 North Main Street, the former Schuler Furniture Store. We do not believe this body to be Mary Coltard as the deceased victim looks to be significantly younger. Currently, officers have secured the scene and detectives are processing evidence at this scene. Further, detectives are researching the activities of Mr. Courtney over the last 72 hours. Any citizen having information regarding Mr. Courtney or suspicious activities in the community should contact the Janesville Police Department at 755-3100 or Crime Stoppers at 756-3600. Mr. Courtney is charged with attempted first degree reckless homicide, attempted arson, criminal damage to property, disorderly conduct, and all of which are domestic related. And with that, I'll answer any questions that you may have. You said the blood wasn't consistent that was found on Mr. Courtney uh, with the I, crime scene? What I said was the mud on Mr. Courtney was not consistent with the North Pontiac uh, crime scene. When exactly, Chief, did he say he had already killed somebody? 
he was said that to officers or to victims of the attack or that was before he had assaulted his co-tenant before he had stabbed his co-tenant he said that I've already killed three people tonight and we're all going to die he said that to the co-tenant he did is there any indication of possibly identifying the women all you have is that she's younger more. Yes, we have not identified uh, this person and we're working on that now. Any leads as of now that you could share with us in regards to possible identity of that person? We don't have that information. It'd be purely specu speculative at this point. And did he mention to anyone who the friend was that he was going to do drugs with under the bridge? He did not. Just Please a female friend. Know. Well, that's what witnesses told us. We did not have any. Is mental illness expected to be a factor in this? We don't know. Chief, the, the body was found was it in the river or near the river or near near the building there? It was to the rear of the building. As I understand, there's an enclave back uh, behind this building. It was not in the river. And you, enclave, is that like, I know there's like two buildings there. Schuler's head is like between those two buildings. All I can tell you is it's behind the uh, old Schuler furniture. There's an area that uh, is secluded of sorts. Was this body, um, I mean, obviously there's not been an autopsy yet, but um, did it look like stab wounds or was it an apparent yeah, gunshot? We won't, we won't know those answers until autopsy. You expect to get those later today as far as a, a, an initial indication of cause? I don't know the timeline on the autopsy. I can tell you that detectives are still processing this scene um, on North Main Street. Are you officially naming Mr. Courtney as a suspect in the Milwaukee or the... Uh, mm -hmm. In the death of the person, the woman behind the furniture store? No. What I have explained to you is what brought us to the uh, North River Street location. This search that went on, what, what time frame did this go on? Uh, early morning hours. I think we found the body about 5.45 a.m. Was there any indication as to how long the body had been there? We don't know that yet. Good. Sorry, was there any evidence you found around the area? You had a large area taped off uh, for a, a, an extensive search. Did the police pick up anything around there? Um, we are very cautious with our crime scenes, and I think that's why you saw that expanded uh, area that was taped off. Do you have any age range on this body that was found? Um, all we have right now is significantly younger than 75. Okay. Um, do you have reason to believe then that based on the preliminary connection between what Mr. Courtney said at this attempted murder scene and the location of this body, that there are two other possibly deceased persons? If we take Mr. Courtney at his word, we would have concerns that, are, that there are two additional deceased persons, yes. Are you actively searching for possibly two other scenes? We are looking for any suspicious activity in the community. Um, we're looking back at, back at our calls for service for something that could uh, fit that uh, fact set. And that's one of the reasons I have you here today is we need the community's help on this. If there were suspicious activities that have occurred uh, over the last number of days, we need to know that. If people know the activities of Mr. Courtney, uh, we need to know that. Again, taking Mr. Courtney at his word, we have two additional victims in this community. Now, you said that this body that you found, you don't expect to be Mary Coulthard. Do you think she could be one of those people if you're taking him at his word? That's a possibility, yes. I can tell you what brought us to the Rock River, and that was um, the statements and witness statements uh, involved on the North Pontiac um, attempted homicide. Do you have any other missing persons in the area right now? No. Does Mr. Courtney have a previous record? He has uh, multiple convictions for battery, uh, multiple convictions for disorderly conduct, and at least one conviction of theft. Do you know if Mr. Courtney, was he traveling on foot or by vehicle? And if so, what was he wearing or what was he driving? I don't have that information. You said he, he, he had told someone that he was going to do drugs under the Memorial Bridge with someone, a, a woman. Uh, did, did, was there any, what kind of drug? I don't have that information. I guess this was a frequent location for Mr. Courtney uh, to drink and do drugs, and that's what he had intended to do uh, previous to showing up on North Pontiac. 
As authorities try to contact or even try to see if that friend with whom he went to the bridge exists, so that person could be of help with the investigation? Those are some of the leads that detectives are following up on. Again, we're, I'm meeting with you folks very, very early in this, and the level of detail you're going to want, I'm not going to have. Sure. I think we understand. If there's something you want the public to be on the lookout for it or have them jog their memory about, what would it, what would that be? Well, any activities of Mr. Courtney, if people know Mr. Courtney, know his tendencies, know where he's been in the last 72 hours, we would be interested in that. If there has been any suspicious activities, whether it's in Janesville or the immediate area, uh, we would be interested in that. And given the level of mud that was on Mr. Courtney, uh, we would be interested in any sites that look uh, disrupted and or suspicious uh, with mud. Has he been cooperative with detectives? Upon apprehension by the officers, he immediately asked for his attorney by name. Okay, folks, thank you very much. Um, as this um, incident develops, we'll um, call more uh, news conferences for you. We think this is an efficient way to share the information with you, and I appreciate all of you showing up today. Thank you, folks. Thanks, Chief.